Today we'll be working on how to transfer your image from a laser print or a laser copy onto your linoleum matrix so you don't have to redraw your drawing. So let's say for instance you have a lot of complicated areas that you drew out once and you don't really want to redraw them again or trace them back onto your matrix by using carbon paper. You can scan it into your computer, you can make further manipulations, you can play with the contrast, you can add in repeating elements, you can continue to work on it digitally as well as just the hand drawing. Um, then you'll need to print it out to the same size as your linoleum matrix, which is 8 by 10. So make sure that your printed product is 8 by 10. Make sure that you have all of your settings right so that you're not reducing fit to size. Make sure that it's the uh, original size as the image when you go to your print options. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's in color because remember we're working in black and white. We just want to know what we're carving and what we're not carving. So don't worry about color just yet. So I have that as an example that was printed out. What I've done, I've cut the page so that it fits flush onto the matrix. And if you turn it around, you can see I left a little bit of a larger margin at the bottom of the page. Folded that over the linoleum and then taped it down because you don't want this to move when you're transferring your image. Okay. This also helps out a lot, especially if you remember that when you put something on your matrix, it has to be the mirror image. So if you want text to read correctly, you would have to write it backwards onto your matrix. So in essence, this way you can work directly, transfer it with the acetone so that you don't have to think indirectly, so that you don't have to write your words backwards. It'll appear exactly as it does on your printed design. So the, there are a couple of supplies that you need. One thing that you need that's probably not on your list is a pair of goggles. Honestly, you're going to have to work really, really hard to get this into your eyes, so probably not going to need them, but it's a really good idea to have them just in case something splashes into your face because you don't want any chemicals splashing in your face. It's actually only instructions to wear uh, skin protection and eye protection and also lung protection. But we are outside, so we don't need the ventilation. Uh, if you do feel a little dizzy, definitely stop, go inside, and uh, seek medical attention if you get too dizzy. But none of that should happen because we're taking all the necessary precautions. We have our gloves, we have our goggles. I'm going to put the goggles on already. The gloves, I just have these as an extra set to show you that I had them. Tape to tape down your image to your matrix. Scissors to cut down your image to the right size. Now, acetone. This isn't just kind of like magic. I'll tell you how it actually works. The reason you have to have a laser print is because a laser printer or a laser copier uses something called toner. And toner is actually a plastic. So it's not an ink, it's a plastic. Acetone is the same thing that used to be used, that used to exist in nail polish remover. And if you know, that's an enamel, that it's a plastic. So acetone will actually melt plastic. So what we're going to do, we're going to melt the toner off of the paper and with slight pressure transfer it to the linoleum. So obviously if it can melt plastic, imagine what it can do with your eyes. So just definitely be careful. Scissors come in handy because they can help you kind of open the lid. You'll need some cotton balls. What you're going to want to do is kind of saturate the cotton ball with some acetone and close it up. You'll have to reuse, go back and forth and get other cotton balls because it's not going to make it all the way across. Now we tape down the paper because I said you don't want it to move because you're going to transfer your image in the wrong spot, right? So you want it to stay put. So I'm going to work from the taped edge towards the edge that's loose. You're probably going to be tempted to pour this directly onto your matrix. There's another thing about acetone. It dries quickly. So you won't be able to get all the way to the other side applying pressure to transfer the toner before it dries. So you'd actually have to start all over again if you were to just dump the acetone onto the paper. So what we're going to do, we have the saturated cotton ball. We're going to press down on our matrix. We're going to press firm pressure. 
work our way, and you can see it's already bleeding towards the other direction, right? Just follow that puddle. You don't have to press very hard. Just kind of rub it. Keep rubbing. Keep rubbing. We're gonna work our way around the whole image. Make sure we don't miss any areas. Making sure our paper doesn't lift up and move on us. We don't want to do that. So we're gonna get one shot at this. So get everything set up and get ready. Okay, see, ran out of acetone. Loosen, lessen the pressure. Open the acetone again. Saturate another cotton ball. If you don't have a cotton ball, a small rag will do. Cotton rag. Make sure it's clean though. So we're going to come over to this area and start pressing this section. Work it down. And the other side, right? Make sure you get all of your image. Doesn't take a lot of pressure, remember, you're just slightly pressing down, you shouldn't get any muscle aches or pains or any cramps or anything like that. Let's keep pressing. Remember I need to go a little bit more over there. That's why I kind of overlapped. You can kind of tell on the back of the page, you can see the image is starting to distort slightly, so you know that the, tan the toner has transferred to the matrix. So you can kind of tell if you've already done enough. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to still press down on one spot and I'm going to lift, kind of if you're testing one of your prints to see if it worked. To see what's happening on the other side. So on my words, I need to go a little bit more over the T. I'll take this one. A little bit more right here. Okay. Lift up from the other side, see what's going on. I lost a little bit, but I can add it back in with my Sharpie. At least you get the general idea. Lift it up a little bit more. I lost a little bit over here. Press a little bit more. Off into the corner. Just a tad bit more. Now the reason I keep closing the lid is because acetone actually evaporates really quick. So you don't want to just leave it open. Otherwise, all your money is just going to evaporate into the atmosphere. We don't want that, right? We want to use it for the purpose that we intended. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift up here one more time. Okay, we got about as much as what's going to transfer. So, here you can see your words are already flipped for you. What's on the right is supposed to be on the left, just in the mirror image. So you have mind, control, we lost the T, but we can draw that back in easily. A couple of areas will be light and faint, but you can go back over those with a Sharpie. The whole point is so that you don't have to redraw 100% of the image back onto your matrix. I want to advise against using your Buren to kind of transfer your image. You say, oh, that's a bigger surface, I can get more pressure, right? Well, remember that your Buren is made out of plastic and this chemical dissolves plastic, so just a word of caution. So once you're done, you can peel off your tape. You can touch up your image with a Sharpie for the areas that didn't transfer 100%, but you get the general idea that it's kind of a medium to go from graphic without having to draw manually. You can use the Photoshop, you can use Illustrator, whatever folk programs that you're comfortable with. And then you can create your design graphically, transfer it without too many steps in between so that it looks more like your graphic image. Um, thank you for watching this demo today and if you have any questions remember to contact me. I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.